Thank you, God. Send the glory. I give you glory. It's simple, I give you. Lord, I give Thank you praise. Uh -huh. Good day once again to each and every one of you. How are you doing on this beautiful, 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 beautiful Lord's Day? Take this moment and this opportunity as always to like, share, comment, uh, whether you're watching us here on Facebook, um, as well as our other social media platforms. It is a blessing. It is a wonderful joy uh, to be here as we're going through this season of Lent together. And so again, we are reminded that Lent is the season, uh, the 40 days prior um, to Resurrection Sunday, where we celebrate um, our Lord and risen Savior. So during the season of Lent, uh, we normally uh, take a moment to sacrifice, to give up something uh, as we walk with Christ to the cross, um, as we remember um, that we are mortals, as we remember our, our frailty, as we attempt to seek to be a blessing um, to our neighbors, which in our nation at this time is so needed. So as we take this moment uh, to pray, if you have any prayer requests, praise reports, prayer concerns, you are able to share that. Um, you can inbox, you can type it right in the screen. Um, we have our prayer partners um, that will touch and agree and be praying with you and for you. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this glorious, wonderful, beautiful day. Now, as we go forth, Lord, in today's morning manner, that the words will not return void, but it will accomplish and prosper in everything you've said it unto. And as always, Lord, bless us, strengthen us, that we will be a blessing and strength to our brothers and sisters, both far and near. Lord, continuously remind us that we are blessed, yes, to be a blessing to others. It is done now. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. As we go forth now in continuing to talk about Brother Joshua, and as we pick up from last week, uh, as we were discussing the dean during this Lenten season, positioning for possession, I want to talk about um, curse in the camp. Curse in the camp that uh, as we share uh, this particular pericope within the story of Joshua, um, it helps us see how tiny issues can cause major problems. Let's go to the word of the Lord. And it says, thusly, but the children of Israel committed a trespass regarding the accursed things for Achan, the son of Camry, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, the tribe of Judah, took the accursed things, so the anger of the Lord burned against the children of Israel. Now Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Beth Avon, on the east side of Bethel, and spoke to them, saying, Go up and spy out the country. So the men went up and spied out Ai. And and they returned to Joshua and said to him, Do not let all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and attack Ai. Do not weary all the people there, for the people of Ai are few. So about three thousand men went up there from the people, but they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai struck down about thirty-six men. For they chased them from before the gate as far as Shebarim and struck them down on the descent. Therefore the hearts of the people melted and became like water. We're in Joshua chapter 7 verses 1 through 5. Wow, how tiny issues can cause major problems. The first piece that we want to help us understand and realize is that in the midst of what we go through, especially during the season, as we have a season of reflection and meditation upon our own lives, what we have dealt with in the past, saints, use your defeats to discover the dilemma. Use your defeats to discover the dilemma. How did Joshua use it? Joshua knew and understood that the word of the Lord uh, had come to him and the promises had come that people uh, would be subject to them. But when his men were chased away, Joshua asked and said, Lord, what is going on? Lord, why is this happening to us that we would have been content being on the other side of the Jordan? He says, what shall we say? When we have our enemies turning us back and running us, he says, I don't understand. You, you promised us that you would be with us, you know, but we're here because of your name. 
And what's going to happen? We want your name to be great. That was Joshua's mindset. He did not know, so he had to seek the Lord. And my brothers and my sisters, stop trying to assume or guess. Many times we just have to get out on our knees or we have to lay in the bed or we have to get in the car. We have to go into our prayer closet and just say, Lord, what's going on? Lord, what, what's happening? That I know what you promised me. I know what you have for me. However, uh, Lord, it, it's not coming to pass or things are not working out like it should. And I don't understand because nobody can help you but God. So take this moment and this time during this Lenten season to, to fast and to pray and to seek the face of the Lord. And I promise you that God will hear you. Next point we want to share this morning is, you know, that you remove, you go from a man helping your defeats to understand your dilemmas to, um, again, this is important for everybody. Number two, don't take what God doesn't give. Don't take what God doesn't give. As we've seen it play out um, on national levels as well as in our own lives. Again, it is very important. Um, there's a song um, that was written years ago by Miami Mass Choir that what God has for me, it is for me. You know, that I don't desire uh, to take anyone else's because that's not mine. And so, again, remember that God, you know, had told Joshua and the nation of Israel that when they were going in to uh, that particular city when they were going in to seize the city to not take of anything that was there because those things were cursed. What happens? You know, again, you always got someone who's going to go against the grain. Oh, there was a gentleman, amen, who went and took of their cursed things. God began to share with Joshua. So God told Joshua, he says, I want you to call the tribes together. I want you to call the households together. I want you to call the heads of the households to come forth. He says, and you will see who took the accursed thing? They shall not stand. You know, they should not be a part. He says, because that thing is messing up everyone else. And my brothers and my sisters, how many of us know that there are times when we deal with issues and we ignore them, we put them on the back burner, and it's still festering there, it's still growing there. Um, there are times, you know, that we've brought other issues, you know, uh, other things, other people into our homes, into our lives, and that's what not God would have for us. Again, if it's not yours leave it alone and if I was in the pulpit this morning you know uh, talking before the people and we were in person I would get real nitty-gritty and let you know that even that's in relationships that if he ain't yours she ain't yours leave it alone because you can't be blessed God does not bless mess do I have a witness up in here don't take what God has not given you. Moving right along. Number three, amen, that your maturity will determine your destiny. That when you realize uh, what has gone on, when God has allowed you um, to see and to discover uh, some of the sins that is going on in our own personal lives or around us or things that are not right or we have things that are not ours, you know, again, it is an awesome maturity that you're able to recognize and to correct your mistakes so you can walk in your destiny. Immature people are not walking in their destinies. You know, remember that maturity determines your destiny, that when you rise up and be who God has called you to be, and when you walk in what God has called you to be, and you're not going to walk perfectly. You're not going to walk, amen, uh, things that are always going to be circumspect. But you're going to walk with a sense that, Lord, if I stumble, if I fall, I come to you as humbly as I know how. I come seeking, asking you, my master, you know, to build me up, Lord, because you said in your word through David, a just man falling seven times, but the Lord raises him up. And so as Joshua began to go forth, you know, he began to see and to hear and to realize um, that there was someone that was in the camp you know, had taken one of the accursed things. My, 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 my. And so as he began to realize that, as he began to understand it, he had to walk in a sense of maturity. These are individuals who he grew up with. These are individuals who have been a part of his life. These are individuals who he's fought with, who he's worked with, uh, who he's lived with. And there are times, amen, uh, that is not about friendship and other types of relationships. Um, as the old folk used to say, right? Ain't never wrong nobody. So as we go forth, remember, maturity is very important to walk in your destiny. And finally, uh, we glean from Joshua, divine authority 
is manifested in divine responsibility. Oh, how many of us, we always want the authority to tell people what to do, but we don't want the responsibility when they don't do what they should do. Because when they don't do, guess who has to come and do? So, as you walk in authority and as you desire that you want uh, to be the head person in charge, as you desire, you know, that I want to make the decisions, also that with your authority becomes a responsibility. Joshua, when he found out that it was Achan who had taken that accursed thing and he had buried it in his tent, and so Joshua reminded him what the Lord, where the Lord had said to him and what the word of the Lord was commanded them to do, um, then the God of the Old Testament, um, again, he, it was not about mercy. It was amen, about obedience. And Achan was punished, you know, for taking that accursed thing. And Joshua had to stand and bear the responsibility. And it is important that whether you're leading our nation or whether you are leading your dog or your cat down the street, if that is and you are given the authority you also must take the what responsibility for what incurs from their actions and that is what makes our world go around and that what brings balance and that is why it is so important that as these principles are not only for Christians, but therefore humanity, that as we walk in authority, let us also bear the brunt of our what? Responsibility. Come on, somebody, and say amen. And lastly, now, um, the point we want to leave with you is a natural breakdown becomes the supernatural breakthrough. Many times that when we have to uh, discover, you know, the dilemmas that are facing us, when we have to uh, be able to mature and, and man up and woman up, that when we have authority um, and we got to bear responsibility, um, there are times when we feel like, we, you know, this is just a breakdown, whether it's a breakdown of communication, whether it's a breakdown of understanding, whether it's just a mental or physical breakdown, we're like, Lord, have mercy. Lord, uh, yes, I did this wrong, but do know that if you continue walking in the grace and mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that your breakdown can become your breakthrough. And so, God told Joshua when Achan was removed, he says, now I want you to go back up to the country. Now I want you to go back up to that place called A.E. Now I want you to take that city. Now they will be placed in your hands. Why? Because you're following exactly what I've commanded you to do. And sure enough, my brothers and my sisters, when Joshua and the army went up, uh, God gave them the city. There was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. The city fell to their feet. And I'm here to tell you that when you face um, the things that you have done in your life and you keep God first, God will turn your break down into a breakthrough. There are individuals right now who are needing a breakthrough. You have so many breakdowns. You've been broken down, torn down, walked down, talked down. But now it's time for you to break through all of those barriers mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, and financially. And so you may need to be a part of a family. We invite you to be a part of the virtual family of the Mighty Fortress. And here, if you've never known Christ or if you um, desire to recommit your lives, repeat these words. Dear Lord, I am a sinner and I'm asking you today to become the head of my life. Please forgive me from all of my sins. I believe you died on the cross for me. And three days later, you were raised from the grave. And because I believe today, I am saved. Now, Lord, Please fill me with the gift of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, somebody type in, I am saved. God's blessings of peace and love be upon you. And remember, amen, if there is a curse in the camp, uh, do know, amen, that God will turn your breakdown into a breakthrough. Now, join with us as we share in the 3T ministry, the time, talent, and tithe of St. John, the Mighty Fortress. There are several ways to give to support the ministries of St. John Baptist Church, the Mighty Fortress, your time, talent, and tithe. We've made virtual giving so easy. Just text St. John SAV to 73256 and follow the prompts. That's St. John SAV 73256 and follow the prompts. 
or you can call the number right on your screen to speak to someone and give your credit card information. 912-844-1872. That's 912-844-1872. Or feel free to mail in your cash, donations, and tithes to St. John Baptist Church, The Mighty Fortress, 2415 Eastern Avenue, Savannah, Georgia, 31406. And to give your time and talent or to find out more information on everything going on at St. John the Mighty Fortress, including our virtual worship experiences, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Periscope. Or go to stjohnsavannah.org. Ah, blessings to you. And again, we thank you. Uh, as we shared on last week, we thank you for your commitment uh, to continuing supporting uh, the ministry through your time, your talent, and your time of St. John the Mighty Fortress during this pandemic year that we've had. But we bless God um, that as we're beginning to come out of this, we ask that you continue to remain faithful uh, in your living and your giving. And as we now uh, take this moment and share in the sights and sounds of St. John the Mighty Fortress, uh, let us uh, meditate and reflect upon what we see and hear. May you continue to send uh, those wonderful pics. We thank you uh, for what you have shared thus far. And it's always great uh, for all of us to be able to see each other during these virtual times uh, to share uh, and this experience uh, right here during Morning Mana. Continuously hit us up on the website, uh, www.stjohnsavannah.org. Uh, look and listen uh, right here on 99.7 iHeartRadio. Uh, for uh, the traditional radio broadcast of none other than St. John the Mighty Fortress every Tuesday from 7 to 7.30. Then come right back here on Facebook for Thoughtful Tuesdays uh, right here at 7.30 that we can share a thought that is full of wisdom and word to get you through the rest of the week. Continuously hit us up on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And you still have time to join us this morning for Drive In Worship right here on the wonderful, beautiful campus of 2415 East Darren Avenue, the soul of Savannah. Yes, worship here at St. John the Mighty Fortress. Come as you are in the family car. And we thank God for allowing us to continuously to meet in mass. And as we go forth and positioning ourselves for the possession of promise, Remember to look beyond your disabilities and see the possibilities and make the possibilities realities in your life for God will give you as far as you can see. Thank you, God. Send the glory. I give you glory. It's simple, I give you glory. 